battery is on battery is on this one is on bottom battery is on I've got a light I've got a light I've got light we've got light we're on 54.3 volts charging with 2 amps 0.3 in the top battery 1.1 amp in the second battery 0 amps in the third battery and 0.3 amps in the bottom battery and we are at 98 percent state of charge this is for the whole Google tower of power guys welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny and winter Australia this is our weather today We've got a little bit of cloud situation today here but as you know this is perfect for me and my shading through these trees here so the clouds are distributing the light equally here on the solar system and we had over 70 amps outside this morning already what do we have right now 2.4 kilowatt plus 400 so makes almost 3 kilowatts and we've got uh, 50 amps outside all right 39 now 43 45 what did it say 50 38 the MPPTs are working really really hard <laughs> guys in today's video we want to do well we want to do one of the most anticipated tests here in the offcut garage we want to have a look at the JK inverter BMS version 19 in the top battery version 14 in the second and then we've got version 15 and another version 15 in the two bottom batteries here and one of the major complaints about the JK BMS is the accuracy of the internal shunt of measuring the state of charge correctly yeah this is all well and good as long as you frequently and regularly fully charge your battery and reset the BMS to 100% and if you do this every couple of days the state of charge calculation is fairly accurate but in winter time most of us are not lucky enough to fully charge the batteries and then when the JK inverter BMS doesn't get the needed reset at 100% state of charge the whole SOC calculation is not accurate anymore and drifts further and further as time goes and in today's video we want to compare how good are these calculations in these different models of the JK inverter BMS actually so for this reason we have paralleled the global power of tower all four batteries are in parallel as you can see we've connected the positive to our Powerball 2.0 here at the top and the negative is connected down here through the Victron smart shunt test and we want to use this test shunt here as our point of truth because we know the Victron smart shunt is actually measuring the state of charge very accurately and even after weeks and months of not resetting the state of charge the drift of the smart shunt is only three to five percent maximum and I've experienced this myself here in the battery shelf for the last couple of years I've got a 500 amp smart shunt the same model as we have down here and in winter time I'm not fully charging these batteries here for about three three and a half four months and when you do the full first charge again in springtime i'm always making a video about it because i want to show you how far the deviation in each of these battery banks is after four months of not getting any balancing and we also want to see how far has the victron smart shot actually drifted away from a 100 percent state of charge so down here we are just at the beginning of winter time so it will take another two months I guess until we fully charge this battery again but I've managed to fully charge the Google Tower of Power here now Google Tower of Power now with the help of the pool fan system so at the moment I'm trying to reach 55.2 volts here all the BMSs will be on 100% the smart shunt will be on 100% and then we start using this Google Tower battery here I will connect my wife's vehicle or the vehicle charger to this Google battery and this will be the only load for the next two months or so yeah we've got the pool fan system trickle charging these batteries here and then we use this energy here to charge the electric vehicle and over time we want to see how much are these different model of BMS actually drifting away from our point of truth the Victron smart shunt is there a difference between version 14 version 15 and version 19 here at the top have they maybe improved anything in version 19 uh, let's find out so I just did the calculation here for this battery 280 plus 314 plus 280 plus 304 ampere hours makes all in total 1178 ampere hours times 3.2 volts 
times 16 per battery makes a bit over 60 kilowatt hours of energy storage. So this is actually slightly larger than the battery in her vehicle. So we should be good because she's not using the car every day. So the solar has actually time to trickle charge and replenish the energy used. And then when she comes back home and plugs in again, it uses a good amount of energy out of these batteries. But then over time, it can trickle recharge the battery again. So hopefully this works out for the next two or three months. Yeah, this will be a bit of a long term um, experiment here. But we really need to partly charge and discharge these batteries here a couple of times and then compare the BMS state of charge with the Victron Smart Shunt. In a couple of days, I managed to fully charge this tower already. And I used this opportunity to calibrate all the BMSs at exactly 55.2 volts. I also isolated each BMS and calibrated with a 21 amp current. So all four BMS models experience the exact same calibration method, 55.2 volts and 21 amps. So hopefully this helps them to calculate the state of charge correctly. And you can actually see the progress of this test here in the SPED calibration center VRM. So here's the average number of the state of charge of all four of these batteries reported by the master to the system. We are on 55.14 volts already, so we are very close to hit the 100%. And down here you can also see what the smart shunt thinks is the state of charge. And this one sits already on 100%. All right, I'm also starting the screen recording here on the mobile app. We are still in bulk 55.19, 55.2 now. We should see the bulk. Yep, we go into absorption right now. You can see the timer starts here on the other side. And we just want to have a look at the other BMSs. This one is the first one is in absorption mode as well for six minutes and then it resets to 100%. Battery number two is in absorption mode as well, 55.22 volts. And slave number three is in absorption mode as well. Perfect. This is how good these JK BMSs work together now. So here we have all four batteries and home assistant. You can see the voltages, the current, the state of charge. So we should actually see the slave one, two and three resetting to 100% before the master hits 100% because this timer runs the longest and they should reset after four or five minutes now. Deviation 6 millivolt here, 6 millivolt here, 4 millivolt here and 8 millivolt in the top battery. So that is pretty good. And the smart shunt test sits already on 100%. I want to show you the battery configuration or settings here as well. So we have 1178 ampere hours in this tower. The smart shunt resets to 100% at 55 volts if the tail current, so if the current going into the battery is lower than 4%, this is um, 1178 amps. 4% of that basically is 47 amps or something. And if the current is under this 4% for three minutes, it actually resets to 100%. I made a whole video about all these settings here in the smart shunt. If you want to know more about this, I'll link this video down below. So, and now after a few minutes, we can see all the slave batteries or BMS, they have reset to 100% and the master is still in absorption mode, holding 55.2 volts for all the batteries so they can actually balance, which they already have. So we are actually good to go, but we need to wait for another 20 minutes or so until this BMS actually resets to 100% as well. Batteries are definitely 100% charged. I've already plugged in my wife's vehicle to the inverter, but I haven't started the charging process obviously yet. And the vehicle is on 18% state of charge, so it's fairly low at the moment. So it will take a good chunk of energy out of these batteries, probably 80, 90% or so until we hit 100% state of charge with the vehicle. And I want to fully charge this vehicle today. It is only an eight amp brick charger, so it will take so two point between 27 and 29 hours or so it will take so until tomorrow afternoon but well, that's fine the battery can handle it the inverter can handle it. it's only an 8 amp trickle charge into the vehicle but this should actually discharge the battery to about 
20 30 percent already or so and then we will have the continuous charging during the day discharging from time to time charging charging discharging so a typical use without a full charge of the battery and then after three four five six eight weeks or so we have to fully charge this battery again and see how much these bms have actually drift against what the smart charge shows Unfortunately, I cannot share any of these informations here because they are only available in Home Assistant. So you only have the information here in the Victron VRM. You can see the average of the master BMS, the voltages, the current and the temperature of the battery and also what the smart shunt thinks the battery state of charge is. And we take this one as our point of truth. So let's give this another couple of minutes here until the master BMS is on 100% as well. And then we start charging the vehicle. Okay, and the master has just reset to 100% set of charge as well. All four batteries showing 100%. The smart shunt test shows 100%. Let's go. All right, vehicle is plugged in. Charging has just started and 1.8 kilowatts we are pulling from the battery, 27 amps. But the um, solar charge controller obviously will recharge during the day as well. So a bit of energy will come from the solar directly, but all the rest comes from the battery. Let's have a look at the currents. 28 amps from the BMS reported by the JK and 25 by the Victron Smart Shunt only. So there is already a difference we can see. How does it look like in the individual BMS? Five amps from the top battery, 13 from the next one. This is the one with the highest capacity though. And this one has measured with um, 330 ampere hours or something for this battery here. So a huge capacity. It always delivers more power than all the other batteries. 4 amps coming from this one, 6.5 amps from a 304 ampere hour battery. Yeah? 280 is the smallest together with the master 280. You can see the current is also the lowest. Battery with the highest capacity has the highest discharge power. Okay, let's go into the settings of the vehicle. Uh, state of charge is on 14% only. Charge management, yeah, sits on 100%. Perfect. And here we can have a look at the BMS of the vehicle. So it sits on 14.9% state of charge, but it seems like the actual battery capacity is on 23%. So there's a bit of a difference here. So it shows the user of 14% state of charge in the vehicle only, but in reality, the battery is on 23%. So we are charging with 3.1 amps into the high voltage battery. We are at 373.8 volts. And here cell voltage maximum 3.28, minimum 3.28. Yeah, obviously this is still in the flat area of the curve. All right, as I said, this will add to 2.9% per hour now to the vehicle's battery here. So it may take uh, 28 hours to fully charge this vehicle. And here a quick look in the Victron Connect app connected to the Phoenix inverter, which has been used to uh, charge the vehicle now. So it has a power output of 1800 VA. That is perfectly in the green area. Nice. Okay, uh, 29, over 29 hours. This will be tomorrow late afternoon. <laughs> 623. Welcome to all the new subscribers. All right, my friends, so far this introduction video to this uh, long term test here, I will make some update videos in between and show you the calculated and displayed state of charge of each of these different models of the JK inverter BMS, because this test may take eight to 10 weeks, but um, today it is just the start of this test. So I'm really keen to find out which of the versions of the BMS is actually the most accurate. Yes, and I'm also actively talking to Ji Kong about how to make the JK Inverter BMS more accurate in terms of measuring current and also calculating the state of charge. So hopefully we can achieve something here in the long run. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support, for all these generous donations I'm receiving, buying me a beer, a smoothie or becoming a channel member. 
thank you very very much for that and also don't forget to like and leave comments under the videos this all helps a ton and makes these videos here possible thank you very very much guys until then you stay charged stay safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye